Okay, so as an exercise, let f, which is a function from the set A into the set B, and g, which is a function from the set B into the set C, be bijections. Show that the inverse of the composition g of f is the composition f inverse of g inverse. Okay, so new definition. Let phi be a map from the set A into the set B. And let A sub naught be a subset of the domain A. And let B sub naught be a subset of the codomain B. Then the set, which we denote phi of a sub naught, which is the set of the elements phi of a in the set b, such that a is in the set a sub naught, that is the set of all those elements in the codomain that were mapped onto from elements in the uh, subset a sub naught, the set is called the image or sometimes direct image of the set a sub naught under the map phi the set which we denote phi inverse of b sub naught which is the set of all those elements in the set a such that phi of A is in the set B sub naught, that is, all those elements in the domain that were mapped onto elements in the set B sub naught, this set is called the inverse image or pre-image of the set B sub naught under the map phi. So whether or not a given function has an inverse, we can always consider the inverse image of subsets of the codomain under uh, the given function. So notice that the direct image of the subset A sub naught is a subset of the range of the function phi, which is a subset of the codomain B. The direct image of the entire domain is the range of the function, which is a subset of the codomain B. The inverse image of a subset B sub naught of the codomain is a subset of the domain of the function and the inverse image of the entire codomain is the domain of the function. So also notice that it is possible that the inverse image of a given subset b sub naught of the codomain is empty since it is possible that there are elements in the codomain that were not mapped onto. Okay, so new definition. Again, let phi be a map from set A into the set B and let B be an element in the codomain B. The inverse image of a singleton the inverse of the singleton set containing an element 
B of the codomain is called a fiber of the map V. So notice that a function V from a set A into a set B is injective if and only if every fiber of the function phi is either the empty set or a singleton since for an injective function an element in the codomain is either mapped onto by a single element or is not mapped onto at all. And a function is surjective if and only if every fiber of the function is non-empty Since for a surjective function, every element in the codomain is mapped onto by at least one element of the domain. And if we combine uh, those two statements, we see that a function is bijective if and only if every fiber of the function is a singleton. Since for a bijective function, every element in the codomain is mapped onto by exactly one element of the domain. Now further, if b sub 1 and b sub 2 are two distinct elements of the codomain, then the intersection of the fibers of those elements is empty since otherwise there exists an element A in the set A such that the ordered pair AB1 is in the relation phi and the ordered pair A B2 is also in the relation phi and hence phi is not a function now we will use these properties of fibers uh, in this lecture uh, when we consider uh, the quotient topology and quotient spaces, we'll look at other properties of fibers that are useful uh, in analyzing that space. Okay, so new definition. Once again, let phi be a map from the set A into the set B. And let A sub naught be a subset of the set A. The restriction... of the function phi to the set a sub naught which is denoted this way and this is read phi evaluated over the set a sub naught is the map from the set a sub naught into the codomain b that is the restriction of the function phi to the set a sub naught is the set of all ordered pairs a phi of a such that the element a is in the set a sub naught. So notice 
that if a function phi from a into a uh, from the set a into the set b is an injection then the restriction of that function to a subset a sub naught is also an injection since every element in the set a sub naught which is a subset of the domain is mapped onto a unique element in the set B. So recall a given set A is finite if and only if there exists a bijection which we will call phi from the set A into a uh, finite set starting with one and ending with an integer n, a positive integer n. In this case, the cardinality of the set A is the positive integer n. Now by convention, The empty set is finite, and the cardinality of the empty set is zero. So next we'll prove a lemma. So let n be a positive integer, let a be a set, and let a sub naught be a specified element in the set a. Then there exists a bijection, which we'll call f from the entire set A into a terminating subset of the positive integers starting from 1 and ending with n plus 1 if and only if there exists a bijection which we'll call G from the uh, set A set minus that uh, specified element a sub naught into a terminating subset of the integers starting with one and ending with n. So proof. Suppose that the function g from the set a set minus the singleton containing the specified element a sub naught into the terminating subset of the integers starting at 1 and ending with n is a bijection then define a function f from the entire set a into a terminating subset of the positive integers ending with n plus 1 by f of a is exactly the same as g if a is not equal to a sub naught and n plus 1 if a is equal to a sub naught then clearly the function f is the desired bijection of the set A into 
the terminating subset of the positive integer, starting with 1 and ending with n plus 1. Conversely, suppose that the function f from the set a into the terminating subset of the positive integers beginning with 1 and ending with n plus 1 is a bijection. Now if f of a sub naught happens to be n plus 1, then the restriction of that function to the set a set minus the element a sub naught is the desired bijection. of the set a set minus the element a sub naught, the singleton containing that element, into the terminating subset of the positive integers, starting at 1 and ending with n. Otherwise, f of a sub naught is some element m, which is strictly less than n plus 1 and there exists an element which we'll call a sub 1 in the set a such that f of a sub 1 is n plus 1 so define a function h which is a function from the entire set into a terminating subset of the positive integers beginning with 1 and ending with n plus 1 by h of a is n plus 1 if the element a is the specified element a sub naught, the element m if a is the element a sub 1 that maps onto n plus 1 by the map f and otherwise is identical to the function f if a is an element in the set a set minus the two specified elements a sub naught and a sub 1. So notice that in this definition of the function, we have forced the element a sub naught to be mapped onto n plus 1. Notice that uh, clearly this function is a uh, bijection. We have merely uh, exchanged two uh, elements. And so let the function g be the restriction of the function h to, to the set a set minus the singleton containing the specified element then this function g is the required bijection of the set a set minus the singleton containing the element a sub naught into the terminating subset of the positive integers starting at 1 and ending with n.